Engineers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant say they're learning more about what caused one of their robotic cameras to get stuck. They sent it inside a reactor vessel earlier this month to get a better look at the damage there. And they say a newly released video is shedding light about what went wrong. This 60-centimeter snake-shaped robot was designed to navigate around obstacles amid strong radioactivity. But it stopped after crawling just 10 meters inside the containment vessel of the number one reactor. Video footage released by Tokyo Electric Power Company shows the robot tilting to the right. Officials say they've given up on recovering the device. Crew sent a second robot to retrieve the first machine, but the rescue robot also suffered a malfunction. Its camera stopped working due to radiation exposure. So they've decided to abandon both of them. Officials say the footage they retrieved before the initial device stopped working is helpful. It shows no major damage to part of the containment vessel close to the bottom. Melted nuclear fuel fell to the bottom of the vessel in the 2011 accident. The operator says it will analyze the footage and other data with the aim of eventually removing the fuel. A public swimming pool damaged in the March 2011 earthquake and tsunami in northeastern Japan has reopened in Iwaki City, Fukushima Prefecture. The pool is about 100 meters from the coast. More than 100,000 people visited the pool every year before tsunami damage to the building's first floor forced officials to close it. The new pool makes me feel the city is recovering, little by little. The complex includes a walking pool and a seven-meter-high water slide. Many families and children were on hand to take the plunge. Trade negotiators from Japan and the United States are meeting face-to-face, -face, trying to work out their differences. They're the two biggest economies out of a dozen negotiating the Trans-Pacific Partnership Free Trade Deal. Ai Uchida joins us now from the business to tell us how the talks have been going. Now, these TPP talks have been going on for years. What can we expect uh, this time? What kind of progress can we expect this time? Exactly, Catherine. And part of the reason that the talks have taken so long is that the two biggest economies at the table, Japan and the U.S., uh, you know, they have failed to smooth out their differences on sensitive topics like uh, food and car trade. But the people who have been talking since Sunday are pretty high up in rank and this is the first time in six months for them to cover the issues. The only people more senior than them are the Prime Minister and the President and those two leaders are scheduled to meet later this month. So there is a lot of focus on what the negotiators will announce after today's meeting. Japan's negotiator Akira Amari and his counterpart Michael Froman are now at the table. Today will mark the climax for the TPP negotiations between Japan and the U.S. We want to secure our own national interests while doing our best to narrow the differences between the two sides. The U.S. wants Japan to expand the annual quota for U.S. rice imports by 175,000 tons and to buy an additional 40,000 tons for processed foods per year. Japan is trying to keep rice imports to a minimum. Tokyo wants Washington to immediately scrap tariffs on Japanese auto parts, but the U.S. is calling for a deferment. The two countries are also at odds over how to deal with automobile trade disputes. Last summer, Japan experienced its first outbreak of dengue fever in 70 years. Public health officials in Tokyo are now taking steps to make sure the disease doesn't spread again. NHK World's Misako Oshie reports. Officials with the Tokyo Metropolitan Government are starting their fight against the dengue virus before mosquito season sets in. They are looking for larvae in stagnant pools of water and are dropping pesticide into gutters in nine parks. 
They are also trying to catch the insects to see if they are carrying the virus. Last year, about 160 cases of dengue were confirmed around the country. Most of them were tracked to this park in central Tokyo. Yoyogi Park is one of Tokyo's most popular getaways. With the arrival of spring and warming temperatures, more and more people are expected to flock to the park. I do not know about that, and that is uh, alarming. The government to do something about that or something, that would be very nice. The discovery of the virus forced the closure of the park for nearly two months. The infections were initially limited to people who had visited the park, but soon the virus was found in others who had not been here. Dengue fever is spread by mosquitoes and not from person to person. Symptoms include severe joint aches, headaches and fever. Officials say they will continue their measures against dengue twice a month. Mosquito season begins in July, at the end of the rainy season. We would like everyone to take preventive measures and get rid of stagnant pools of water wherever possible. Until recently, outbreaks of dengue fever had been limited to tropical countries. But with global warming and the growth in international travel, the number of cases around the world is expected to continue growing. Misako Shie, NHK World, Tokyo.